Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about describing the motion of a polar curve, or really just like what's happening as you graph a polar curve. So you might remember like with a function, you talk about like a normal two-dimensional function, you talk about it being increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. Polar's a little different in the way you talk about it, so let's uh, get into that and see how. So if we are given a polar curve, um, r equals f of theta, there are actually three things to consider. So the three things are r, x, and y. So r is kind of the radius, it's the distance from the origin. It's kind of the directed distance from the origin because r could be positive or negative. And then x, y is just where you are in the x, y coordinate plane. So these are the three things we need to think about. Because of that, there's gonna be three rates that we need to think about. We need dr d theta, dx d theta, and dy d theta. So what we're gonna do here is just kind of look at an example um, graphically. So I'm gonna find three points on this um, and try to describe what's happening on the polar curve at these points. So um, I'm also gonna take a look at uh, the direction. So I'm kind of assuming that you know how to graph polar. If you don't, I have a lot of videos on how to graph a polar curve. Um, I use the rectangular graph and turn it into the polar graph. For this particular curve, we would start on the positive x-axis and you can watch it, like I already did it, I'm gonna do it again. Um, I'm starting on the positive x-axis out at like five zero and uh, that kind of orange, it's a little hard to see. Um, I'll do it again. We're going this way. So you, you go like through the first quadrant, then you end up in the third quadrant because R is negative. Um, so instead of uh, continuing in the first quadrant, we end up in the third. So I'm assuming you know how to graph in polar because that's kind of essential to figuring out what's going on. So we also would look at the rectangular graph. So the three points, I'm using color coding here. The three points on the polar curve, um, here's r and theta for our rectangular graph, are roughly in these positions. I didn't try to make this perfect, but I put them in the correct relative position so that you can see uh, what's happening on the rectangular graph. Um, so at the point that is, I don't know what color that is, maybe maroon, uh, if you look at just the rectangular graph, you can see that r is definitely greater than zero. Um, I'm also gonna add in, uh, I forgot I was doing this, I'm adding in little vectors that show you the direction that you're traveling. So that's really the tangent vector. If you've already done vectors, if not, that's just showing you the direction. That, so if you were traveling along this curve and uh, you fell off the curve, that's the direction in which you would continue going. Um, so I'm, I'm putting a vector there. Um, all right, so looking at the rectangular graph up here, you can see that R is definitely greater than zero. And from the rectangular graph, you can see that R is decreasing. That's also indicated in the motion along the polar curve. You're getting closer to the origin, like you can tell as you graph, but dr d theta is less than zero because the rectangular graph is decreasing. That's how I figured that out. Now, because r is greater than zero and dr d theta is less than zero, we are gonna be getting closer to the origin. So there's a relationship there. If r is positive and dr d theta is negative, then the absolute value is decreasing. You're getting closer to the origin. Um, if r is negative and dr d theta is negative, then the absolute value is increasing. You're getting farther from the origin. So we're going to have to think about that. All right, let's talk about the x coordinate. What's it doing? Well, just look at the ordered pair on the polar graph, and you can definitely see that x is greater than zero. Um, now, like if you remember how we graphed this, we started at five zero, and then we sweep in toward the origin. You're getting, you're moving to the left, so dx d theta must be negative. On the next page, I'm gonna actually calculate some of these, um, but this is just to kind of like summarize uh, what's going on. So if x is greater than zero, dx d theta is less than zero, we're getting closer to the y-axis. So it is true to say that the x-coordinate is decreasing. That's definitely true. dx d theta is negative, you're moving to the left, um, the x-coordinate's decreasing, all of those are true. But usually with these, you wanna describe what's happening relative to one of the coordinate axes. So I'm gonna say closer to the y-axis. A picture can really help with that. Um, you can also see that y is greater than zero because you're in the first quadrant. Um, if you look at that vector, that vector is pointed down, which means that uh, dy d theta is less than zero. So the y-coordinate is decreasing. So the y-coordinate's positive but decreasing. You're actually getting closer to the x-axis. And then I'm gonna do this kind of uh, analysis for the blue-ish point. I don't, maybe it's turquoise. Um, so I'm gonna put in a little vector that shows kind of the general direction. So you can see that vector is going to the left and pointing down. So to the left, dx d theta is gonna be negative. Pointed down, dy d theta is gonna be negative. 
um, we're, we're in the third quadrant, so we know that x is negative and y is negative. Um, the real question is, what's going on with r, right? Because polar is a little bit different. So I'm going to look at the rectangular graph for that, and I can see that r is negative there. So r is negative, and dr d theta is also negative because the graph of r of theta, r is a function of theta, is decreasing. I'm looking at the rectangular graph to get that. So dr d theta is less than zero, and again, we're moving, so in this case, we're moving away from the origin because r is negative and dr d theta is negative. So this is a lot like um, determining if speed is increasing or decreasing when you're in like calc AB or like early calc BC. I'm talking about like rectilinear or linear motion, motion along a straight line. So this is exactly the same idea. Like here, it's like speed is increasing. You're getting farther from the origin. Um, and then we can see that x is less than zero by looking at the polar graph. We know that we're moving generally to the left, which means that dx d theta is less than zero. So this means, what are we doing relative to the y-axis? We're moving away from the y-axis, definitely. And you can see that in the picture. Um, you can also see that y is less than zero. You're moving down. So look at the vector. The vector is pointed down. That means that dy d theta is going to be negative, which means you are moving. What, what are you doing? So y is negative. dy d theta is negative. That means you're moving away from the x-axis. If y is positive, and dy d theta is negative, you're getting closer to the axis. It's all relative position, so you got to know where you are. Um, so we're moving away from uh, the x-axis. All right, I'm going to continue on with this, this next point. So I don't know what that is, purplish? Um, so a little vector to show our direction. And then here we are on the rectangular graph. The rectangular graph tells me r is negative, so less than 0. It tells me that dr d theta is positive because that rectangular graph is increasing at that point. And so if r is negative, dr d theta is positive, I must be moving toward the origin. That's what's going to happen when, when you have that scenario. All right, we're also in the third quadrant, so x is less than 0. You're moving, look at the vector, it's pointed kind of toward the right, dx d theta is positive. So x is negative, dx d theta is positive, you're getting closer to the y-axis. Um, y is negative, the arrow is pointed up, so dy d theta is positive, so negative y, but the rate of change is positive, we are going toward the x-axis. And then I just, I did one more, um, thinking that it would vary it up, but I actually chose, like, basically the same thing. Um, so there's our point on the rectangular, so I put a point on polar, it's in the second quadrant, I put a point on the rectangular, I'm going to do a little vector to show the motion, um, and then... You can just kind of see, like, r is greater than 0 there based on rectangular. dr d theta is less than 0. x is less than 0. dx d theta is positive because you're pointing to the right. y is greater than 0 because um, you're in the third, uh, sorry, second quadrant. dy d theta is negative because the vector is pointed down. Um, and then we could say what's happening there, but I didn't want to do that. All right, let's take a look at an actual, like, kind of problem. So if we have r equals f of theta... There's two things that we need to remember. X is equal to R cosine of theta, and Y is equal to R sine of theta. Now, that's important because you need to be able to convert from rectangular, polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar. It's also important because if X is equal to R times cosine theta, and R is equal to F of theta, then X is really F of theta cosine theta. So to find dx d theta, we have a product of functions. We're going to need the product rule, and that's true for Y as well. So dx d theta and dy d theta are going to require the product rule when you actually do these things. Now, I came up with an example that I do not want to do by hand because it's just kind of gross. Um, we're going to describe r equals theta sine of theta at theta equals 7 pi over 4 with respect to its position relative to the origin, the x-axis, and the y-axis. I'm going to use a calculator. So here, I'm just going to show you some screenshots, I guess. Um, I defined my function. So I defined r of, I always use t instead of theta. I find it annoying to find theta on the keypad. Um, r of t is t times sine of t. That's given. x is going to be r of t times cosine of t. So I already defined r of t, so I just want to use r of t there again. And then y is r of t sine of t. Um, so the first thing I did was I figured out the values, right? So r, x, and y. Because we need to know if they're positive or negative to be able to really do this. So r is negative, x is negative, 
and y is positive. 7 pi over 8 showing up everywhere. Oh, I guess because it's 7 pi over 4. Yeah. I was like, that's interesting, but it's really not. Um, and then I found the three derivatives. So I just used the derivative template. So the derivative of r of t at t equals 7 pi over 4. The derivative of x of t, the derivative of y of t. So we get um, positive for dr dt, um, d theta, I guess, uh, negative for dx d theta and dy d theta. And now all we need to do is kind of like write it out, right? So I'm going to say at theta equals 7 pi over 4. And we have to say everything, right? So r is less than 0, dr d theta is greater than 0. And because they have opposite signs, you're going to be getting closer to the origin. So in this case, I wrote approaching the origin. Uh, I don't know. I think that that's a nice way to say that. All right. Now, what's happening with x? Well, x is less than 0, dx d theta is also less than zero. So those are both negative, which means you're going to be getting farther from the y-axis. Or moving away from the y-axis. I don't know. The fact that dx d theta is, uh, I should have said theta there, I said t, my bad. Um, the fact that dx d theta, dx dt is less than zero means you are moving to the left, but that's not really how we want to describe it in this particular case. Um, and then for y, y is positive, dy dt, dy d theta um, is negative, so they have opposite signs. Um, but we have to think about it. So if y is positive and uh, dy dt or dy d theta is less than zero, then we're going to be getting closer to the x-axis. And a picture can help. Like at, Definitely you should draw a set of coordinate axes and plot the point and put like an arrow to show the direction so that you don't screw up like I sometimes screw up, like, I'm talking about x, x, x. I'll try to say something about the x-axis. That's not how it works. Like, if you're talking about the sine of x, dx, d theta, you're really talking about position relative to the y-axis, which has the equation x equals 0. I personally confuse that sometimes. So the last thing I did here is I just graphed on um, GeoGebra what this curve looks like. It's really, it's kind of an interesting curve. I only graphed it between 0 and 2 pi, um, and you get this, which is wacky. And then I put a point at, at theta equals 7 pi over 4. I put in the vector. I scaled the vector down. The actual vector, um, the tangent vector there, is, is a lot longer. Um, I cut Well, it's twice as long. I cut it in half so it would fit in this picture. Um, but you can see, right, that that vector is pointed a little bit to the left, which means dx d theta would be negative. It's pointed a little, well, it's pointed very down, um, which means dy d theta will be negative. You can see that you're in the third, uh, God, I messed that up multiple times in this video. You're in the second quadrant, so x is negative and y is positive. The one thing you can't really tell from this is you can't really tell if r is positive or negative by just looking at a polar graph. You do need to plug in um, or actually graph it. It takes a little bit more thought to figure out if r is positive or negative. Um, but that's it. That's, that's how we can describe uh, you know, what's happening on a polar curve. It's a little bit different from a function, but it's the same ideas. Just, uh, you know, you have to do it kind of like three times. All right, so I hope you found this helpful and good luck.